I like to use number needed to treat N and T to describe effect size. N and T is independent to p-value, doesn't say anything about the likelihood that the difference is true, but it helps us judge the clinical significance of something that is true or that we think is true. So a low p-value doesn't tell us anything that something is important, just tells us that the result is likely to be true. It's, it's uh, statistically significant to a specific threshold of p-value but it doesn't say if that difference is important. So how do we uh, look at something to see if it's important? Well, number needed to treat is one way. How many patients would you need to treat with drug A instead of drug B before you would expect to encounter one additional outcome of interest, such as response? So if it takes fewer patients, the NNT is a lower number, there's gonna be a larger difference between the two drugs. It takes fewer people to receive drug A versus drug B before getting the outcome that you want. So I'm gonna go for A if it has a low NNT. What's number needed to harm? Well, number needed to harm is NNT's evil twin. And we refer to number needed to harm when we're talking about events we would rather avoid. So excessive sedation as an adverse event we want to avoid. Weight gain we want to avoid. So when calculating the NNH, we want a high number for NNH. We want to treat more patients before having to deal with that adverse event. So we'll get into some examples that make this more concrete in a moment. So a clinically important NNT is one that's a low number. A large NNT of 100 means that, you know, they're not gonna see this difference. If it takes 100 people to receive A versus B before you encounter that outcome, well, you can spend all day uh, trying to see this and you won't notice it because you don't, uh, it doesn't happen at a frequency that is uh, noticeable in day-to-day -day practice. However, an NNT of two, for every two patients you make one decision versus the other that you encounter this difference in outcome, well, that's a huge difference. There are very few drugs, interventions versus placebo that have an NNT of two. I can think of a couple of examples. One using, let's say, intramuscular ziprazidone, 20 milligrams for agitation, compared with two milligrams of intramuscular ziprazidone for agitation. Well, for every two patients that you give 20, instead of two, you're gonna encounter one additional responder in terms of calmness. Okay, that makes sense. Schizophrenia, here's an example. In a two-year period, someone taking their, um, their medicine has a relapse rate that is going to be lower than someone who's not taking their medicine. That, that sounds obvious. What are the actual rates of this? Well, 75% of people who are not taking medicine will relapse in a two-year period. That's a rule of thumb. For those who are taking their medicine, it's uh, 25%. It's not zero. I wish it was, but it's 25%, which is a lot lower than 75%. And the NNT there is two. For every two patients who are continuing their medicine versus not, you'll avoid a relapse event in a two-year period. So those are a couple of examples. Uh, an NNT value of less than 10 is usually denoting something you'll notice and potentially useful in day-to-day -day practice. Greater than 10, probably not, uh, but an NNH is what you want, greater than 10. You don't wanna have to deal with that problem. Some NNTs may, may actually be quite important despite their high, high uh, NNT value. Let's say you're treating something very difficult to treat. You've tried all sorts of things. You're gonna actually try something that may not be so uh, efficacious. The effect size may be kind of smaller, but you have no other choice. So we have to use our brains when looking at NNT and NNH.